Today I'm going to share with you an example of an agile project that is both incremental and iterative at the same time. Oh, and by the way, I've got a free one-pager summary for you, free to download. So keep watching till the end of the video. So some time ago I posted a video about incremental and iterative development and how very different the two approaches actually are. And to illustrate this, I use the painting of the Mona Lisa as a metaphor, which I think works really well, but it's a little bit abstract. So let me share with you now a concrete example from the real world of software development. So let's say we have a calculation engine to develop with lots of numerical inputs, and a calculation engine that's basically made up of lots of functions that take the inputs and create intermediate values. And those intermediate, intermediate values become the input for the next function. So you end up with something like that. And finally, you have the results or the outputs. And this could take the form of numerical values again, or maybe you end up with some charts or line plots, as well as perhaps tables, just to display your numerical values. So now the question is, how might we go about developing this? And then the naive answer might be, well, we have to develop all the inputs first, because without the input, we can't start implementing the functions, the calculation functions. And without the calculation functions, we have no outputs, and therefore we can't implement any of the widgets for the front end. And the thing is, well, this would work. However, it's really risky. Why? Because it would take a long time to see any widgets showing the results of the calculation. And when I say long time, it's not so much about waiting longer to get the results. It's more about the fact that you spend so much development effort flying blind effectively, writing code with very little feedback because you have no outputs being displayed. For the users, their domain is here on the outputs. And if they don't see this for a long time, you're not going to get any valuable feedback, really. I mean, what if the calculations were not designed properly? What if the outputs that we planned were not actually that valuable in the end? What if we discover at the end that we needed different outputs that we didn't even think of at the beginning? It would be very late to discover all of this at the end of the project. Well, here's what we do instead, using the idea of incremental and iterative development. Well, first you have to think about where the value is. And the value is in the outputs. So that's where you should start. You have to work your way backwards from the outputs. So what you do is you mock out the values, the output values, and work on the widget. Skip the whole calculation engine and the inputs. You don't need that for now. You first, you need to validate that these outputs are the correct ones to have. So you mock all those values that you expect at the end of the calculation engine. They become hard-coded if you wish. Now you can implement the widgets and iterate on them. Was the bar chart the right way to show it? Maybe you want a different kind of chart. Maybe you don't even want a chart at all for this kind of data. Maybe a table is more appropriate. Who knows? Once this is in the bag, you can work your way backwards and work on the engine. And what that means is that you replace the mocked out data by an actual calculation and mock those inputs and work your way backwards like this by replacing bit by bit the mocked out data by the real calculation. This would be an incremental way of developing this. And the best thing about this is that it also gives you a test framework because as you replace a mock data by the calculation, the output shouldn't change. So you have a way to verify that what you're doing incrementally works with what you're expecting. So again, that would be the incremental part of the project where you incrementally add more features. Now, this is just an example, but you've got to find your strategy for your project because that's what it is. It's a strategy. It's a strategy to reduce risk. Now, I'm curious though, what kind of strategies do you use in your projects? Does it involve the concept of incremental and iterative? Do you think about that when you think about risk and how to reduce it? Now, of course, there are many other ways to reduce risk. And I think I'm going to cover some of these in future videos. If you think that's a good idea, give me a thumbs up down below so I know this is what's something you're looking forward to. Now, if you need something easy to look up to remember what the key differences are between incremental and iterative agile concepts, well, I created a summary one pager for you to download for free. So for that, just go in the description down below. You'll see a link. Click the link and it'll take you to a PDF I just made. No mailing list, 
no things to sign up for or to subscribe. It's just free, just a direct link to the PDF. And if you want a more in-depth look at this concept of incremental versus iterative development strategies, have a look at the video on the screen now. It will show you the fundamental behind these ideas, which are key to success with Agile. If you want to support this channel, there's two easy things you can do. One, click the like button, and two, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell button so you get a notification when I upload a new video. And I'll see you next time.